made it to Wyoming. I just parked the truck. Um, first thing I have noticed is a lot of people. We have probably eight trucks at the trailhead, horse trailers, and the whole road on the way in full of people. I expected it. Um, uh, snag one last parking spot probably. Just got the bike unloaded. Got the pack loaded up. That 7200 is loaded about as full as it can get. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna bomb in now. We're gonna bike and then we will hike in to camp. Should have about four hours till dark. Hopefully I could get set up and then we'll make a game plan for the morning. Son of a gun. Man, it's been a whole lot of this. <laughs> Trail turns to fallen logs. And I have to pick, the, get up, pick the bike up, put it over. Probably every hundred yards. It seems like there is a tree falling everywhere. But we made it up in pretty good time, maybe hour, hour and a half. Looks like there's been a good amount of people on the trail. And I just passed four hunters on horses that are going in here as well to the same spot. So good luck to them. Well, I made it up to where I wanted to camp initially, and there's two tents right over in those pine trees back behind me. And I, th I saw five guys skylined on the ridge, so there's too many people in here for me to camp. I'm gonna have to keep going up and even further deeper into the back country. So going into this trip, I didn't pack any water up. I just brought this 64 ounce, this 32 ounce, and this 32 ounce all empty so I had less weight on my pack because it was already heavy. I'm gonna put some water tablets in here to help purify the water. Three, four, one. But we got about an hour left of daylight and I'll probably end up getting to a place to sleep um, in the dark and I don't even know if I'll be able to pitch my tent. I might just throw out my pad and my bag and go to sleep. We'll see how it goes. But we got a long ways to go and we're back here deep. It's gonna be interesting, but it's gonna be fun. As nightfall came, I didn't have much time to look for a spot to put a tent. The steepness of the mountain also prevented me to find a spot for the tent. So I opted to find a deer bed off a nearby ridge and dug it out to be a flat spot where I could place my bag and my pad for the night. I then fired up the jet boil, boiled some water, and ate my freeze dried meal of choice for the night, lasagna. And then it was off to bed to get rest for opening morning. is underway first light is here I think I've only heard one gunshot maybe uh, a lot of guys I had, I had two guys come up through my camp right before light I'm sitting up here with them right now and uh, just some average bucks for now
morning is kind of winding down, hitting that uh, late morning lull, but there's still some shadows off in this basin right here that I'm gonna go check out and uh, blast for the rest of the day, kind of sit. That's gonna require packing up camp. I actually met two guys, like I was saying, and they're actually really cool and invited me down to their camp tonight and we've all three glassed up a nice buck um, earlier this morning that I didn't really get any footage of it was too dark and uh, the phone battery is dying so anyways we're gonna go put a play on that buck tonight if nothing happens the rest of the day that's gonna require me dropping elevation going down through this stuff and then going up onto that face over there where the buck was. This buck seems unpressured, so we're gonna go give that a shot for this evening. For now though, I'm gonna say goodbye to this camp and pack it up and move down. giant buck. I was coming down through these pine trees and came face to face with a small bull elk 12 yards away. He took off running down through the trees, made a bunch of noise. So I waited a minute and then I went down another 100 yards and out of his bed jumped this giant velvet mule deer. Looked like a four point typical deep back forks. He kind of went side healing. He's right, bedded right above where I'm gonna meet these other guys for the night to, to uh, sit for that buck from this morning. But uh, gosh, great buck. If he would have just stopped, possibly could have got shot, but he, he knew something was up right, right away. Dang, what a, he was a big buck. After jumping the giant velvet deer, I decided it'd be best to stick to my game plan from the morning and press forward through the pine trees to a sniper position where I could then look across to the face that the big buck would cover in hopes he'd come out that evening. As I got down there I cleared out a spot where there would be no branches, brush, or anything in my way and I could lay flat on my backpack to shoot across the face. It was a long windy day and little action to go with it. The days in the high country can be very long as the morning hunts go quickly and the animals move into the darker trees for cover, there's little to do during the day, except take in the views, naps, snack, and sit with anticipation that something will move in the evening. Nothing much moved this evening, except for a couple small bull elk and a couple does. It was time to then go to bed, reassess, and make a new game plan for the morning. Well, the morning hunt is pretty much winding down. Not much deer action at all. We saw one decent three by four way off in another basin. Um, we saw him last night as well. And then for a quick glimpse of time, uh, we had the, the four point with a small cheater from yesterday come out and he went into the trees in the exact same way that he did before. I got, I got the gun into position and ready and it was a 630 yard shot. Uh, I opted not to take it. I just felt a little rushed and uh, didn't feel like it was ideal. The two gentlemen that have been uh, hunting in the mornings with me are leaving so I'm on my own again. Uh, they're going to a different area. I'm gonna stay here, post up above where I saw the velvet buck yesterday and sit for the day Hope these bucks come out tonight and maybe get a shot. If not, I'll hunt in the morning. But this buck has done the same thing two mornings in a row. So I think he's, kill he's killable as long as nobody um, messes with him. So I just gotta be patient and be ready for when he comes out.
time to relax. It's funny because uh, pretty much sit around all day. Then you have to come back and sleep for eight hours and try to relax there. Crazy challenge coming up backpacking and to do it alone and I've had I've been able to use my phone just a little bit to send out a couple update texts and that's it so like really just being alone up here is it's a different feeling like we're so used to for bored pulling out our phone looking at Instagram or texting somebody or calling somebody up or hanging out with somebody talking to somebody and I've got to do a little bit of that in the morning glasses with those with those guys but that's it everything else has just been kind of in my own thoughts I could probably stay in another day full day but I don't want to push it and be completely out of food so I think I'll try one more morning hunt and then hike out of here and if I don't get anything I'll come back in a week or so and try again probably <sighs> climbing into bed just finished dinner it is 8 56 right now ignore the background of my phone every time I don't know why but every time I open the screen it changes my background to something I do not know how to change that setting so I've just kept it <laughs> It's going to be a long night. I'm going to I set my alarm for 5:30. And then uh, I'll wake up and slip back down. Try to get into position for one of those bucks. Hopefully he comes out soon. Quick and uh, I can get a good shot off. I don't want to have to shoot too far. <sighs> Clocking out. So low. Night 3. Final night, hopefully. morning sun having barely enough time to light the hillside I had already had a few deer in my scope a few more minutes of light and I found one great buck and what looked like two others so I hurried grabbed my gear and sprinted down the mountain to my sniper position gosh guys oh my heck after two full days a half day and now this morning up in the Wyoming high country all by myself I just shot up what looks like a great buck I got up on these cliffs way above me about 400 yards above and was glassing and debated coming down to my sniper position but uh I figured I'd glass first and sure enough Three great bucks stepped out, so I took off running down through the cliffs, falling, tripping. I didn't know if my I was going to lose my gun on the way or what, but um, I got into position, and one buck was still out. Looked like a nice one at 415 yards, and I shot and just drilled him. It looks like, according to the video, 
So now I'm gonna go over and find him, hopefully, and we'll get out of here. Walking up on him, looks like he's at least a four. I don't know if it's the one I've been after or a different buck. He's a four. Does he have a little cheater? Can't tell, I'll have to drag him out of there. Wow, that is a big body. Wyoming mule deer, so low. Oh man, awesome buck. I'd be, I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to leave early or doubted myself in getting a deer. Especially this morning, on the last morning, I almost didn't even get out of bed because I was just planning on leaving after the morning glass. But I got there and got myself into position and the target buck and a couple new ones walked out. He might have not even been the biggest, but this is for sure the one we've been after. Got the cheater on this side. Nice eye guards, real heavy bases. Uh, but we got it done. You can see behind me those white rocks or where I shot from. That was my sniper position. Way up there in that big cliff saddle, that's where I spent the first night. That's where I located this buck from. And then up in those cliffs that are probably washed out, that's where I was glassing from this morning when I, before I dropped in to get the shot off on this buck. Right in the shoulder, a little quartering away, but it dropped in, probably came out this side perfect. A great deer, great body, beautiful cape mature look at the ear length on these guys these are big deer up here but yeah probably probably one of my greatest accomplishments mentally this is a very tough hunt for me and uh, I'm just happy they all came together now if I could break them down before the Sun hits me that'd be awesome and we'll get back up to camp and try to get home by tonight it's gonna take a lot of effort even more than I've already put in but that's what we came here to do. Thank you. I cut with speed and precision as I raced the rising sun on the hillside to try to get this meat up into some shade and hung before it got too hot. September 17th was the day. Got it done. All right, it's a heavy pack, but we gotta get to camp. It's getting hot out now that the sun is up. And then I gotta get pack, camp on here and get out. We'll see if I can do that. Because that's a heavy backpack. That's, that's 100 pounds e easily. It's a 500 foot elevation gain to camp. And then a 200 foot to get out of camp and then it's downhill to there for seven miles. So, shall we? Well, I get to say goodbye to that nasty hole. It's the last time I have to climb out of there. Thank you. Thank you, big buck. Now camp is just right up there, top of those pines. I get to that, I'll drop the pack, let the meat air out, resituate, get hopefully all my stuff, and then climb that beast to get out of here. For the sake of carrying, it's gonna be easier to have the meat in there, so I just grabbed some snow in this bottle from a nearby north slope. I'm just gonna stuff it in there like that, and maybe that'll help keep it cool as we hike out of here, but time to go that way. Hell 
we go. This is what we signed up for. Oh yeah, that's the heaviest pack I've had. Oh, the final uphill push, and then it's all downhill from here. Oh man. Oh goodness, made it. Now it's side hills and down hills. And if I can make it through those, we've made it to the truck. Oftentimes I hunt alone, but usually I'm not far from home. A half hour drive and I can be in my bed at night. This was a new challenge. A challenge mentally and physically that I hope to accept another day. I learned a lot on this hunt about myself and about the wilderness that surrounds me. Thank you, Wyoming. Thank you, Buck. This was a trip that I'll remember forever. Solo in the Wyoming backcountry.